Greetings and welcome to another edition of Louisiana History Alive. I am the Baroness Micaela Almanastro de Pontalba, addressing you today from the gallery of the beautiful historic New Orleans collection located in the heart of the historic French Quarter. Today, my guest is the much esteemed painter and ornithologist, Monsieur John James Audubon, internationally acclaimed for his bird portraiture and specifically for his monumental and seminal volume, The Birds of America. Monsieur Audubon, thank you so much for gracing us with your presence today. Merci, ma baronne. Certainly the honor is mine today. Many people may be familiar with your name as it adorns also our park here, the Audubon Park, the zoo, the aquarium, and most recently a bridge which uh, goes over the Grand Mississippi River has also been named for you. Few people, however, may be aware of why your title is so ubiquitous in the region. Do you care to elaborate, sir? Merci, uh, Marlon. I think the truth of the matter is that it is not the man, Audubon, who is honored, but the work that I have done uh, the Birds of America has made me internationally acclaimed. Uh, the first subscribers to the book, in addition to yourself and my father-in-law, uh, were the kings of England and of France. Uh, I was invited to dine in the White House with President Andrew Jackson. And I think it is because of this fame that the name Audubon endures. But I like to believe that it is because of the specific bird portraits which I have done the most popular of which were done here in Louisiana. Uh, the cranes and the herons are probably the most popular uh, birds. In auction, they uh, fetch the highest prices. Um, and I think that it is uh, because of this, my work in the area of ornithology, that uh, Louisiana and New Orleans uh, choose to claim me as a native son. And I'm very, very happy for, to accept that honor. And can you tell us, please, Monsieur, why is the Audubon Society also named for you? Well, as you know, Baroness, uh, in the Victorian era, it was a very common fashion for women to wear hats uh, with ornate plumage, uh, the feathers of uh, very beautiful birds. So much so, in fact, that entire species of birds uh, were becoming threatened with extinction. And so a young student of my wife Lucy's approached her, uh, this was after my passing, approached Lucy and said, Madame Audubon, uh, we wish to form a society to raise environmental awareness of this uh, critical risk to uh, the bird species of our country. And uh, what name is better associated with uh, ornithology than Monsieur Audubon? And uh, for this reason, the society has uh, chosen to uh, honor my work. Thank you for the explanation. And what brought you to the region of southern Louisiana? When did you arrive? Uh, well, I've been in Louisiana uh, many times in my lifetime. But uh, perhaps the most important period in terms of my work uh, was the years 1820 and 1821. Now, as you know, birds fly south in the winter, and I am very much like the birds in this sense. I, I migrate to this area because of the abundance of uh, bird species that are here, primarily in the winter time. December is a rich time for me here. Uh, there are numerous varieties of birds in large numbers, and I am able to observe uh, multiple generations of birds. And uh, so for this reason, uh, I come here and uh, primarily to work. And when you are in the city, where do you rest your head, sir? Where do you reside? And uh, how do you occupy your time? Well, currently, uh, I share one room uh, 
uh, with my young assistant, Joseph Mason. Uh, Joseph paints all of the backgrounds mm -hmm. in my portraits. And uh, together we share one room uh, here in the French quarters on the corner of Dauphine et Conti. Uh, and it is very cramped uh, with all of my uh, field notes, things that I bring in from the wilderness, my instrumentation and my artist supplies. So we prefer to spend our time out of doors. Um, I personally like to shop. We say right? I shop, I spend uh, much time in the French market here in New Orleans. As you know, the French market is the oldest continually operating public market in these United States. And in our time, it was a place where we could purchase fresh meats and uh, seafood, which of course is abundant here. Uh, and the, the odors were overwhelming <laughs> at the time. Mm -hmm. But also, I could purchase birds, bird specimens. Uh, the hunters from Barataria would bring in species of birds that were commonly consumed by local inhabitants. But these bird species were entirely unknown in Europe and to much of North America. And so, although I am credited with the discovery of these uh, species, in actual fact, I purchased them at the French market, some for my consumption and some to bring back to my studio for uh, study and to paint. Mm -hmm. I am very much enjoy your paintings, sir. Uh, especially those of the Louisiana blue uh, heron. Mm -hmm. Could you please estimate for me approximately how many birds you painted in New Orleans and the surrounding region? Well, first, merci, uh, Baroness, for being a subscriber to the book. Uh, the Louisiana blue heron is also one of my favorite uh, paintings, and nationally and internationally, it is also one of the uh, most popular paintings and calls the highest price in auction. Mm. My goal was to document all of the native species of this country. And in my time, I was able to paint 333 unique species of birds. Mm. Of that number, 33 I completed in my one year here in Louisiana, in 1821. Now, as a subscriber, you know that uh, my portraits are highly detailed. In fact, in my studio, I have a brush with only one hair on it. And I use this brush to draw the individual hairs of every feather within the wing. Now imagine, if you will, 33 of these highly detailed all the bottom portraits completed within one year's time. I think that this is an indication of the rich environmental diversity of this area but also an indication of the stimulation of the culture of New Orleans. Indeed, sir. Indeed. I must ask, sir, if you will permit me. I have heard, yes, and is it or is it not true that you ate all of the birds which you painted? C'est vrai, madame. It is true that I ate all of the birds mm -hmm. that I painted. If you read my journals or the ornithological biographies, in addition to describing the behaviors and the physiognomy of the birds, I would also describe their flavors, uh, which ones I considered sufficient sustenance for uh, human consumption. Now, I spend much time in the wilderness, and while I'm there, I, of course, need food sources for myself. And because I must shoot the birds in order to bring them closer to me for observation, I do not wish these birds to go to waste, and so uh, perhaps, if you will, as an act of conservation, I will consume the birds for my own sustenance. But as I say, I am also looking for new food sources. Our country in our time is rapidly expanding west, and the population is exploding, and there is need for new food. And so uh, that was also one of my ancillary goals in uh, my biographies. Fascinating. Well, thank you once again, Monsieur Audubon, so much for your commitment to your environmental vision and also to your art grand artistic legacy. Please do give my regards to your gracious wife, Lucy, and to your two lovely sons. Merci, Baroness. I will. Of course, any man with a wife as constant and loving as Lucy Bakewell Audubon 
must surely consider himself wealthy. Indeed, sir. Indeed. Hmm? This has been yet another edition of Louisiana History Alive. I am the Baroness Micaela de Pontampa. Please do join us again. <laughs>